This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We are looking forward to another fun conversation about practical prayer and ancillary topics. (laughs) 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 And you're always amused because I sometimes dive us down into a rapid hole of ancillary topics. I know, I'm getting used to it. (laughs) So, talk about what you want to talk about today. Yeah, I want to, you know how... You hear a lot, you know a lot, but then when the actual realization hits you or you stumble into it and you're living it or it becomes real, whatever you want, that's like a moment. So if we think about the reality that we're living in, the reality of your own personal world being an outpicturing of your internal thoughts, Mm -hmm. that is really really not only scary, but it's life-changing. It can be. It's an aha moment, but wow, that's really an understatement. So, you know, I've read about that and you read about, I read a lot of stuff, you know, because I read a lot. And it makes- You write, you read a lot. (laughs) And it makes sense, but it's what I used to term in, when I was in the traditional church, you got to wear these scriptures. You get to walk in the sand. You have to put the sandals on. You have to walk in the sand. You have to feel the the air and all of that. And it's the same with new thought and any philosophy, I think. Oh, yeah. You know, you have to wear it. But that sounds really nice until you do. Yep. And Dr. Johnny Coleman, Mr. in Chicago, who founded the Universal Foundation for Better Living, she said, it works if you work it. That was like her signature line. It works if you work it. And it does. And I want to go back and we're going to talk about one of the words that you used, Mm -hmm. because one of the ones that trips people a lot is reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, that your reality is an outpicturing of your mind. And reality is slippery because what's reality? You know, there's somebody sitting there with a wound and they would describe the reality as that they're injured and they're in pain. And the fact of the matter is, it's possible for somebody to have a wound and to not be in pain. So sometimes that's because it's brand new and there's a bunch of adrenaline that's come along with it, so they're not feeling it yet. Sometimes there's been an anesthetic. And sometimes just for whatever confluence of events, even though there's an injury, it's not nearly as painful as it might be. And when we use the word reality, it kind of suggests that there is a common thread that's the same for everybody. So if you replace the word reality with experience, so instead of your reality is an outpicturing of your mind, your experience is an outpicturing of your mind, then what may go away is the pain, or what may go away is the injury entirely. And the reality can be whatever somebody wants to objectively describe it as. You know, what a journalist would write down or what would show up in the medical chart which doesn't have nearly as much to do with the experience of the person who's experiencing it as whatever the documentarians around them are going to be doing. So it seems really subtle until you realize that there's that gap. Yeah. Okay. Reality has a really powerful feel to it. I'm creating reality. It does. But I think in some circumstances, I'm thinking of one right now, it depends on what you need, you know, I think. Mm -hmm. 
circumstances to me are kind of lightweight. You know, they're changeable. I know that I can change it. And it feels mm-hmm. like it's not a great big deal to change it. Reality seems to have some roots to it. That may not be so. That certainly may not be so. But I use the term my reality, which is where I am at this moment, where, you know, I am right now. And it feels to me that there's a bit more to this reality than just a present circumstance. Okay. And I was going to say experience rather than circumstance. Yeah. That experience. Circumstances are another way of describing the things that are going on around us. And we don't want to let those define us either. Let's do a really quick exercise in the difference between reality and experience. So I want you uh, and everybody who's listening can play along with this as well. Take a deep breath and hold it. What I want you to do is hold that breath as long as you can. Hold that breath until your experience is that you need another breath. You need more oxygen in order to survive in the next moment. And that can be after a few seconds or it can be after three minutes. It doesn't make any difference. At some point, the experience will be, it's time to breathe again. I need to breathe again. The reality is there was always enough breath. There was always enough air available. The experience is what the way that we're engaging with that reality. So, and in the same way, the outpicturing in our mind, if we don't believe there's another breath available for us to take, then we're not going to take the breath. And our experience will be one of scarcity. And if we happen to be deep underwater, then we're going to try and avoid the experience of drowning. (laughs) When the next breath comes along. But if in fact that good is available to us, then when we open to that new possibility with the belief of that newness coming into our experience and let go of the attachment of how I'm going to get from 75 feet underwater to the next breath of air, there are lots of different ways that that can happen. And I set my intention for that experience to be plenty to breathe, then there's an opportunity for my experience to shift around. In reality, there are a bunch of things fitting into place in a way to give me that next breath. But reality isn't changing. It's just the way the pieces fit together that are changing. Yeah. I just need to say I'm not letting go of reality just yet. No, you then as long as you know what you mean, that's fine. It's broad. Again, I said it's deep rooted because sometimes you, we can't forget to, when I introduced the subject, and I may not have done it quite as well as I would have liked. It's about what's <laughs> it's about what's in your head, right? You're right. It's an out picturing of what's in your mind. And that yeah. has some really deep roots in many cases. And it can get by you if you're not attentive to that. If you're not thinking, you end up in this with the same experience. <laughs> okay, let's do that. The same experience. And the reality of it is there are you're having this experience because the roots of it you haven't dealt with or you're not aware of it. It just, it's in your head. It's what has to change in your head. I have way too many clothes. Now, that's relative, you know, because when I lived in a huge, humongous house, it didn't seem like I had any clothes because it was (laughs) But when I move to, you know, something a little different, I'm like, where did all these clothes come from? I got to get rid of all these clothes. What's the reality here? And I keep adding stuff and whatever. And I thought, wait a minute, I'm looking around thinking, what's going on in my head? Why is this here? And why is that there? And there's a lot of things. You know, I talk to so many people. So I have stories going on in my head right now of examples. But until you think clearly and you take a moment to think clearly about what's going on here, the same thing can keep happening and happening and happening. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean about, you know, whatever's going on in your head, it's outpictured in your experience, which is a great thing. You know, that's wonderful because you don't have to say, I don't know what the heck's going on. (laughs) You can, but when you you say, wait a minute, it's really me. It's really me. Sit down and figure this out. What a great advantage that is. Sure. And what you were saying earlier, sometimes 
there's a truth and you got to put the sandals on and walk through it and be in the sand and be present with it. You know, wonderful little bit of guidance from New Testament is as you believe, so it is done. So, and that's in the Old Testament, a few places, and it shows up differently in different spots. And that's the whole crux of it. It's done as you believe. Because even if there's wonderful stuff happening, if you believe it's going to stop, then it's going to stop. And it's not going to stop because the good stuff ran out. It's going to stop because you believe it's going to run out. I thought one of the things that you said really is really important is done it is done as you believe, but you have to believe that. Yep. And I'm just seeing how many, how often we just, I call it read the headlines and don't read the story. Mm-hmm. You know, or the bull, you don't read the bullet points. And that just keeps us from being everything we could be. Because you have to start with what you believe. And, you know, don't get me started because I'll go into what you believe about God. And I think, I think it starts there. Because if you, oh, yeah. you know, if you believe God is mean, then you're in trouble. And that's how you live your life. Fearful. That's right. And God will appear to be mean. Not because God wants to be mean, but because you want God to be mean. All the time. Everything is God doesn't care. God loves you so much that God doesn't care. If God cared, then you'd be able to win an argument with God or make God angry. And that's just not the way it works. (laughs) (laughs) I think if any of us can win an argument with God and make God angry, then we've got way, way too low an idea of God. Let's take a break. I want to tell you a story that I've been working with lately. It's Reverend Bill letting you know that the Practical Prayer for Real Results class is now available on demand. That's right. You can take it at your own pace anytime you want. All the information is at BeTheLight.com. That's B-The-Light.com. You know where to find that stuff. The class is five lessons broken down into 18 modules, and you can take them at whatever pace is comfortable for you. As you work through the process, it starts out with the theory, goes into the practice. There are experiential activities and exercises. And at the end of the program, you will wind up with an understanding of how practical prayer works and a practical prayer for yourself that will work to create transformation in your life. And as you know, it works for everything. Take a look at the class online at BeTheLight.com. There's a sample lesson so you can see how the class is going to work for you and then dive in. The great news is it's on sale now. You can register and save $20 off of the regular price. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're talking about belief and reality and experience and how they're all intertwined. And I said I was going to tell you a story. Mm -hmm. And this is something that has been familiar to me for decades. It's a piece by Portia Nelson. She writes, I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. But it isn't my fault. It still takes me a long time to get out. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it's there. I still fall in. It's habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. I walk down another street. Yeah. Yeah. And there are ways. And I think the thing that's the most wonderful about that is that we can recognize ourselves in that story in lots of different ways. Because that's what happens. We start out being a victim. You know, I'm just walking down the street, minding my own business, and I fall into a hole. Whoa, poor me. And I didn't do anything to deserve this. And that is dismissing part A above, which is it is done as you believe. Because 
if we believe that there's no such thing as a hole, and there's no possibility of us falling into it, we will never find ourselves on that street, on that sidewalk, in that hole. Mm -hmm. And if we believe that it is possible to get hoodwinked by the universe <laughs> and wind up with that problem, then this is the process that we go through. And there are a couple of really transformational pieces between the verses in there. And the big one for me is where it goes from being not my fault to being my fault, which is where we are taking accountability. We're responsible for our own beliefs and the experience that we're creating. And that's really important because if somebody's going to be responsible for the experience I'm having, I'd really much rather have it be me than, let's say, some competitor or adversary or a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> this theology, this philosophy works very well for control freaks. You know that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It really does. Because I just believe so wholeheartedly in self-reliance, personal responsibility, all of that business. And setting your intentions, it's like the beginning of magic. Now, of course, you can make mm -hmm. mistakes, but starting out, where do I want to go? Is this the best way? I stepped in a hole. I'm a control freak. I'm only doing it once. <laughs> I don't have any desire to fix the hole in the street. None of that. My intention is mm -hmm. to get where I'm going in the best way possible. Yep. I think I like the idea of self-reliance and I won't say control freak, okay? I gave that up, but there are nuances of that. This story didn't say anything about how we got out of the hole. Mm -hmm. You know, we got out of the hole and it was a real struggle in the beginning. And then after a while, when we're taking ownership of the next experience we're going to have, it was not nearly so difficult until I think the last time I was like, there's a hole. I know where I am. I, it's my fault. I get out immediately. And it's about finding ourselves trapped in that experience of limitation. This is actually really great learning for a control freak, because if you need to know ahead of time how you're going to get out of the hole, then you're putting a lot of obstacles between where you are and where the experience that you want to have. Mm. That's where surrender and allowing come in. Absolutely. But I think that's a thing that you have to control as well. And I need to get away from that word control because it means a different thing to you and I, I think. I'm talking about being responsible. I'm talking about if it doesn't work, be responsible and say, what about this was not a good decision? What did I miss in this whole thing? And that brings us right back around to reality or <laughs> experience. <laughs> <laughs> so I love having to do the podcast with a thesaurus next to us so we can cross-reference the words. And I'm getting good at bringing us back. <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, yeah, because I, I don't like to leave with a comma. You know, did we get the point across? And maybe nobody really cares, you know, who knows? They just might like the exchange. But that's the teacher in me. I want to make sure we got you, you know, you got it. I say, okay, well, what else is new? But <laughs> and anyway. Yeah. Yeah. There's a natural tendency for us when somebody throws something our way for us to catch it. And when somebody throws a problem our way, we have a tendency to catch it. And we don't have to. It is completely possible for somebody to toss a problem in your direction. You can just stand there with your hands in your pockets or behind your back and watch it hit the ground and say, oh, now your problem is over here. <laughs> but it's still not my problem. You know what? When you were saying that, this is me going off on a rabbit trail, so it's my fault this time. But <laughs> the one, right? The one. Hmm. And the one is the same and is one in everybody. And I am a strong believer in personalities and your personality determines how you express that oneness and so forth. It's like you, you work on the self and not the one. Hmm. Yeah. You know? Well, that's what the self is the part of the one that we have access to. The rest of the one is all showing up in the world around us. And it seems like it's separate. But yes, you do have it. You can choose when you're going to take your next breath in. You cannot choose when I'm going to take my next breath in. 
within a very narrow set of parameters. Mm -hmm. So I have noticed that as the spiritual leader, I do have the ability to control when people breathe in because I tell them in a meditation to breathe in and they do. And it's not because I'm controlling them. It's because I'm inviting them and they're playing along because there might be something for them in it. But for the most part, you can't decide when somebody else is going to breathe in. And you really can't control when somebody or something around you is going to happen other than the way that you're affecting it yourself. If I want to move my car from the driveway to the street, I know that I can go outside and get in the car and move it to the street. And that's inside of my range of things to do. It's also possible for me to ask somebody else to do it. It's, there are all kinds of different ways that my car can get moved from the driveway into the street. Some of them pleasant, some of them not. You know, with high enough wind or deep enough flood, I'm sure that could happen without any human intervention, but I'm not really going to invite that in. <laughs> So it's, it's about letting go of that, which is outside of our scope of control and opening to different possibilities and allowing the pieces fit together in a way that's going to be joyous and harmonious for us. And the more we can set the intention for the experience to be joyous and harmonious without saying it's going to be joyous because of this, and it's going to be harmonious because of that, the more we can let go of the reasons and the becauses the more room there is for us to find ourselves saying, wow, this is really joyous and harmonious. And it, I never would have guessed that this experience that I've had leading up to this would be this joyous and harmonious and uplifting and positive in the way that my life is unfolding. If it had to show up in a particular way, then we might not be getting it yet. Uh, you're talking about a, a level of maturity that, you know, I'm not trying to say it's really difficult to get to, but I think you have to be conscious of it. It's about faith. You know, the word faith that I think is taken too lightly. It's not faith in what I can do. It's faith in what is possible in a myriad of possibilities. And if I open myself up, that's the control piece of it. You know, I'm not going to try to write the whole story. And <laughs> I used to write the whole story, but I'd leave a little bit at the edge at the end and say, well, God, listen, if you're busy, this is what I suggest. <laughs> I've really worked this out so you can be confident, but now you can change it and fix it if you like. And that was my little thing of faith, right? And I thought it worked pretty good, but it works better if I do that from the beginning and just say, you know, this is what I really would like to see happen. The end result, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's perfectly okay to say, I would like to have my perfect, wonderful, well, we'll call it, we'll make it be a job. I want to have my best job ever. And I might think it would be doing this kind of work, or it might be with that kind of a company or in this sort of an area or paying this much. But as long as we leave that open to the subject to change, open to interpretation, then best job ever can show up as being even better even closer, even more fun, and with a salary that goes well beyond what we could have imagined, and still qualifies as best job ever. Paul Selleck talks about the, in a way, the end, seeing the end from the beginning, which is also a concept that Neville Goddard uses. Mm -hmm. And it's seeing the end result or having an end result in mind, but being open to how we get there or how we're going to get there. And <laughs> we don't pay very much attention to, as Neville calls it, the bridge of incidents, the things that can happen to get us to a certain point. You know, I see a good result. It's happy. I'm wonderful. I'm waiting for it to happen. But when some crappy stuff happens in the middle, I don't tend to think that this is a step toward getting to what I want. Right. If I saw if I saw that from the beginning, I might have had a different idea or decided to not take this journey. But it's an out picturing when you look at the whole picture, what we may be going through at this moment, this little tangled web that we may be going through at this moment, really still is a reflection of where we're going. Does that make sense? It really is where we're going. We have to get through it. And 
understanding that helps our peace of mind if we're willing to sit with it for a minute. Mm -hmm. I've been working on what I call quickie blessings, which is the, how can I do a practical prayer in the fewest number of words possible so that I can like jump one in in a sentence or two. So the full one currently that I'm working on is God knows this activity is blessed unfolding with great success for each of us and all of us. And I'm grateful that this is so. And that's, Sounds fun. That sounds uplifting. It doesn't describe at all what the outcome is. I just know this out. It's unfolding was highest and best with great success for everyone. But isn't that good? I mean, I think that's really... That is good. I don't have to describe what the good's going to be. I don't have to define it. I know good when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I listen to practical prayers and others call it by other names. And I listen to them. And they're wonderful... They're wonderful things that people say, very colorful. But sometimes I want to get to the nitty gritty. I know that God is good. I know that. All things are working together for my good. I know that. So, you know, let me open myself up to the possible, all kinds of possibilities that are going to lead me to this good. This that I'm going through is getting me to the good. I just know the end is going to be good. Why not? Why the heck not? If right. all things work together for good. And that's where the strength, to me, that's where the strength of faith comes. God is not going to get halfway down the pike and say, uh, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's finish up this project. And I think we talked about renovations uh, sometime back. And renovations always start with demolition. You know, going to be redoing the kitchen. You start by taking the kitchen apart. And then partway through, it's like, oh, this used to be a relatively nice room. And now it's got the studs for the walls and the plumbing is showing through and there's no lights. And it's not as nice, but that makes way for the newness to come in. And so now there's a space for the new flooring, the new appliances and the new fixtures. And then it gets to completion. And it's as good as you would imagine, even though along the way, it's not a place where you really could cook dinner. Summed up beautifully, <laughs> really. Let's take a break. And when we return, a practical prayer inspired by Emil Kuei. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We had a wonderful discussion about reality and that being an outpicturing of our beliefs, outpicturing of our minds. And along the way, we have discussed the fact or the understanding that it's done unto us as we believe. But the less we set our intention and our belief on the specifics of what something's going to look like in the world around us, and the more it has to do with the tone and the texture and the flavor of life when we have that new experience, the more latitude the universe has for creating something wonderful as us and for us and through us and with us. Mm -hmm. So the prayer that we're going to do today is inspired by Emil Kuei. And his phrase was, every day in every way, my life is getting better and better. And that's the affirmation that we're going to use in the prayer. And what it means is that I don't have to define what better and better means because when my life is better and better in every way, every day, 
I'll know it when I see it. And when my life gets better tomorrow, it gives me opportunity for great joy and gratitude. And then to know the next day, it's better and better and better. So we'll take that into prayer and start by letting go of our attachment to the way things look and how it's going to work by opening our awareness to that infinite creative power, that divine presence, that one love. It's spirit, it's God, it's nature, it's the Big Bang, it's the source from which everything flows. That is the one, that is God itself. We turn our attention to the infinite. And knowing that that power that created everything continues to create, and it does so by sharing itself as its creation, everything is that God presence in its own particular form. So that's true of each of us. True of each of us right here and right now. And from that place of awareness of the immense power and creativity that's accessible to us, we can make that claim to know without any question that every day, in every way, my life is getting better and better. And that's true in a different way for everyone within the sound of my voice. Every day, in every way, my life is getting better and better. And I invite you to take that for yourself in the first person. I'll repeat it again. Every day, in every way, my life is getting better and better and the good continues to unfold and the better becomes better becomes better becomes best and that's how love unfolds that's how this joyous experience of life unfolds that's how the world the infinite creative power that creates everything reveals itself as health and harmony as prosperity and richness as relationship and love and connection and sweetness as creativity and an opportunity to bring new gifts into the world as a deeper, more foundational awareness of our spiritual truth. Every day, in every way, my life is getting better and better. And as important as knowing that is knowing that there is no power that stands in the way of that. There is nothing in opposition to that intention, to that creative force. So once again, we claim our good that every day, in every way, my life is getting better and better. So I let it be. And so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of Be the Light.com. Be dash the dash light. Com. where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.